All right, you guys, I know you can recognize the voice, even though you cannot gaze upon my wonderful face because my wonderful face has lost two crowns. One of my crowns being in the very front of my mouth. So please, I apologize for the list because my V's and F's are going to be effed up. And because we're in a pandemic, I'm a hard time getting to my dentist. So I decided I needed to get these videos out because I did not mean to have two weeks in between John Jones part one and part two. So I apologize. And here we go. Where we left off was 2015. John Jones had just popped for the cocaine, but he did not get in trouble because that was an out of competition test and he should not have been tested for the cocaine. Uh, he actually went to rehab for 24 hours. This was also the same time where we all had a bunch of questions about his testosterone levels well a lot of people wanted a CIR test which is a carbon isotope ratio test and the same WADA accredited lab that reported the suspicions actually did do the CIR test on the existing samples and they actually found no synth synthetic testosterone only cocaine all right so that, now we're gonna move on to April of 2015 where he was supposed to fight Rumble Johnson however this is when we had the infamous hit and run as we know uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, or excuse me, New Mexico. He ran a red light. He hit, uh, he ran into a car that was containing a woman who was five months pregnant. He left the scene of the crime. He was actually seen by an off duty uh, officer who actually described him as a tall African American man who might be John Jones. <laughs> That's he was known up in them streets. I don't know where he was going. He, he ran back to the car, grabbed some money and took off again in the car, had a bunch of paperwork that had his name all over it. Weed in the car. Either way, he was in trouble. He was actually charged with a felony due to injuring a person and living, leaving the scene of the crime. He was sentenced to 18 months of supervised probation. He had the 72 charity appearances. Remember, this is where we saw him all over the place in the boys and girls clubs, uh, doing schools, giving speeches. This was actually how he got the felony removed off of his record. October 2015, reinstated into the UFC. April 2016, fast forward. This is when he was supposed to have his rematch against DC. DC had a foot injury though, so we saw Open St. Prue step in instead, and John Jones beat him in a five round unanimous decision and getting the UFC light heavyweight interim belt. Shortly after this, however, he tested positive again for two banned substances and he was stripped of the interim belt. Now, Jones claimed this was some tainted Cialis. And yes, you heard that right. Apparently, John was having some issues with his little John, y'all. And you saw to actually had the Cialis independently tested and it came back positive. <laughs> so that's why he was actually only suspended for one year instead of four. They actually decided that, you know what, he didn't purposely take this. Uh, these two banned substances he was just trying to help out his little John and in that year that he was suspended John actually beat Dan Henderson in a submission underground eight tournament via arm triangle now fast forward to July 2017 John Jones finally gets his rematch against DC and he regains his belt in a three round KO of DC which started with the head kick and ended with him beating him down to the ground but again after the fight he tested positive <laughs> this time for Terrenable. Date Tur I don't know it's a Terrenable. Anyway, uh, Dana White stripped him of the belt yet again. Jones's team believed it was a tainted substance, this time not to help his little John, but more like a, sup a supplement. Facing four years again, he only got 15 months due to substantial assistance to USADA. And I know you heard my air quotes with the substantial assistance, which is AKA snitching on the other athletes. To USADA. Travis Tigart, the CEO of USADA, actually said that the independent arbitrator found that jo Jones wasn't intentionally cheating. Again, snitching on other athletes. Now, December 2018, Jones returns. He defeats Alexander Gustafsson for the vacant UFC light heavyweight belt. He beat him with a TKO in the third round. As you know, uh, DC had become the heavyweight champ at this time and had let go of that belt. Since he has regained the belt, because believe it or not, he still has it, he's defended it three times. Also, since 2018, however, he's had more run-ins with the law. April 2019, he was at a strip club and he was accused of a choke 
chokehold kiss on a waitress. And yes, I said that right. A chokehold kiss. Now, Jones actually pled no contest. He got a 90 day deferred sentence where he had to be a good boy and he was ordered to pay the court fees. I want to know, was he ordered to pay the woman who made the accusation? I couldn't see that anywhere. Did he have to pay her as well? This is also where we had some video where he was uh, pulled over by a cop. This time, not drunk. He accused the cop of racially profiling him. I'd also like to know, did anything come of that? I didn't see any charges coming of that. Now, this brings us to present day with his last altercation, or should I say, most recent altercation <laughs> with law enforcement. And let me set the scene, okay? It is early morning, I believe. Nighttime, Albuquerque, New Mexico. We hear shots, bow, bow, bow. The cops are wondering, what may that be? They go and investigate. They come across a black Jeep containing a black man. And that black man happened to be John Jones. And we've all seen the footage from the, uh, the uh, police cam where he absolutely failed his field sobriety test. He also blew twice the legal limit in the breathalyzer. He also said he had vodka in the car. He also had a gun underneath the seat. So... He was charged with aggravated DWI, negligent use of a firearm, open container, and no proof of insurance just for good measure. Because you know the man got insurance. Um, he actually pled guilty to the DWI and all the other charges was dropped. And I'm like, hmm, all the other charges were dropped with his record shooting a gun? Were they not able to prove that his gun was recently fired? Someone let me know. Were they able to prove that his gun was recently fired? Uh, he got one year suspension, or uh, excuse me, one year supervised probation, a minimum of three months outpatient therapy, 48 hours of community service, and of course, as we all know, the four days house arrest. And I believe he didn't go to jail because A, we have the pandemic. If it's not a violent crime, they're not putting you in jail, which actually brings me back to the gun. Were they not able to prove that it was fired? Because if so, I still wonder how he didn't go to jail. But anyway, someone let me know. So again, that brings us up to date because he did that in March of this year. And just real quick, I wanted to run down some fun facts about John Jones. Uh, he's six. 6'4", on paper, 6'4", with a wingspan of 7 foot 1 inches. He actually gave the current Bellator double champ light heavyweight and heavyweight champ Ryan Bader his first professional loss. He's the first fighter to submit Quentin Rampage Jackson, first fighter to submit Leota Machida, first uh, fighter to score a takedown against Daniel Cormier. He's also responsible for the first canceled UFC pay-per-view event. It was canceled because John Jones refused to fight Chael Sonnen, who was the super late replacement for Dan Henderson, who actually pulled out really late because he, but he knew he was injured six week, six weeks prior, but he thought he could push through. He's also the first MMA fighter to be internationally sponsored by Nike. First MMA fighter with his own shoe line. First MMA fighter to wear uh, Gatorade and Muscle Tech in the octagon. Also the first fighter to be stripped of not one but two belts. To this day, do you know he is the longest, has the longest unbeaten streak with 18 wins in a row, or 18 wins? I didn't realize he was still holding that. Also, he has the most title fight wins at 14, although not consecutively, obviously. <laughs> he also has a Spike Guys Choice Awards for Most Dangerous Man. And last but not least, the most recent thing uh, was announced March 2020, is that his fight with Alexander Gustafsson, the first one, the iconic light heavyweight championship bout, is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now we are done! We are done with Mr. John Bone Jones. And I just want to get my little thoughts on him real quick. I don't really want to do the whole psychology of why his actions, you know, are contradictory to his words. Um, I can just tell you that growing up in Utah, heavenly in the church myself, also growing up around a lot of Mormons, and there's also research to back this up. Children that are raised by uh, children who are children of priests, pastors, bishops, deacons, what, or whatnot, have a higher percentage of acting out for some reason. Again, you can do the research on your own. I think John Jones actually fits this. Notice this didn't happen with his other two brothers. There are, uh, there's four of them. Somebody had to act out. I think John's natural personality conflicts with his upbringing. And I think he struggles to align that every single day. And I hope he gets to a place where he can get those, those get peace with those two things and find out how to actually be himself in a positive healthy way um I really want to see where he's at in 10 years 42 years old especially once he gets past his athletic career see how he settles down see where he can be with himself but yeah that's what I think it is uh, as Joe Rogan says all the time 
He's a wild, wild man. And I think that contradicts with his upbringing. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know your thoughts. I asked a couple of questions throughout all of that. I'm sorry for the big delay. And you will see this face again once this face gets her teeth back. (laughs) All right. And maybe I'll even uh, show you guys a picture of me all toothless and whatnot. So please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Subscribe. I'm on Snapchat. Subscribe, like, talk to me, take care, and goodbye.